Hey, what's going on, pilots? Uh, in this review, we're going, going to be reviewing the high-grade Universal Century Pale Rider ground heavy equipment type. Um, in this kit, um, we're going to be reviewing um, all the major points, odds, and ends of this kit um, because it is a P. Bondi kit, and I want you guys to have the best idea of what this kit has to offer before you think about procuring it, or if you're just interested in general in um, the actual points of this kit and what it has to offer. So, um, in terms of color separation for this kit, it's pretty good. Um, you have your dark blues, your light blues, your um, little hint of red in there. Um, I like the way this looks out of the box, honestly. It's not too bad. But my biggest pet peeve with this kit in general are the color correction stickers, which are right here. So these stickers look... Uh, they look okay, but the thing is, is that for anything that was white in the um like in the display model or um like shown white in some of the pictures on the p bondi site um you're not really going to be seeing oh any of that on this kit unless it's with a sticker um i've seen that complaint before with the pale rider kits and some of the other p bondi ones is that um the stickers here are immense for color correction um, you do have the camera ones here, which I don't really have that big of a problem with. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's my biggest pet peeve. Um, so in terms of plastic quality of the kit, the plastic quality is good. Um, it's P. Bondi and it's Bondi, so you're going to expect, you know, really good kits from the first party. Um, I don't really have any other, like, spare thoughts on the kit um in this area like just general overview type things i really like the look of the kit i think it's really cool i think it's going to fit the theme that i want it to fit with the special ops team um but for assembly um it was pretty easy um the kit went together really well um it just wasn't typical to most high grade kits um but honestly it, it just the way it went together in the arm section, it really wasn't typical. It was kind of more like the iron blooded orphan style of arm arm uh joint structure, which was interesting to me. Um, but it still seem it seems stronger than that though, because it does still have poly caps thrown in there um to kind of help with that. But it is definitely different, but it works because it makes everything more articulate. Um and what I mean by that is that I feel like the way that the joints bend actually allow for better angles of articulation. Um, yeah. Um, what parts were difficult with the kit? Not, nothing, nothing was really difficult with this kit. Um, that's the best part of, of this kit in general. And P Bondi is that I've never really, with all the, few p bondi kits i have made there hasn't been like any real issues on assembly um most of the nubs were easy to handle um i think so i used a hobby knife or a glass file on the surface depending on what the surface had and what the space was in between certain features so that i wasn't hitting other features like i'd use my hobby knife to get in really hard areas i couldn't get with the glass file because my glass file is too big um, but after that, I was pretty much hitting everything with 1000 grit and up. There were a few instances of where I had to pull out the 600 grit and really get rid of, um, some features. Those were mostly seam line issues. Um, which I feel like the seam lines for this kit were more than what I'm used to, even for a high grade. But then again, I really haven't attacked seam lines this hard except for like four kits i think so far so it could just be the fact i haven't tackled a lot of that a lot of the seam lines and other kits but it seemed to be a little bit more than usual but it still wasn't terrible like it wasn't like the early grade i feel i feel like it was a step below what the early grade um seam lines were so there weren't quite as many but there was still enough to kind of raise an eyebrow um 
like I was saying earlier, the articulation of the kit. So let's switch back to the kit quick. So the articulation of the kit is pretty good. Um, the arm seems to bend fairly well because of a double joint structure that it has. Um, you can kind of see the one in here in the elbow, but there's also one in here in the forearm. So you can kind of get that type of degree of movement. And then with this joint movement, which you got to be careful, remember it is a model kit, do not go torquing these joints. You get really good arm articulation there. And the shoulder, because of the way that's made, um, it has really good rotation there and really good rotation in here for the arm. Um, it doesn't really expand. The actual shoulder armor does not expand out all that much because it is literally in, in this joint here. So what you would need to do is almost go like that and then move the arm joint. But um, the actual arm itself is pretty good articulation. The axis around, around the arm is good. The fact that that it is um, based in the back of the torso part and not in the front half torso, which it usually is, it actually allows for good movement this way. So you can get like a really dynamic punch. Like, I mean, you can kind of see this right here. But you can get a real dynamic punch, or if you wanted to use the file here, or pile rather, um, then yeah. It, I think it has a lot of potential for really good uh, really good poses and really good movement. Um, but again, these joints are a little stiff, so please handle with care. I cannot stress that enough. I say that for every kit. I don't care how easily the joints move. Move it slowly. Do not torque, because the worst thing you can run into is a broken joint, and then you got to figure out certain ways to fix it, and it's really just not worth the time in my eyes. Um... The legs have really good articulation. You can see here, um, there's not a whole lot of, I mean, there's like some back movement, but because of the thruster here, you can't really do um, a whole lot of leg movement that way. But I will assure you that the joint does allow, like, if you want to put them in a running pose, like, there you go. I mean, it'll touch. Um, you can even go above um, the 90 degree mark with the leg, as you can see there. Um, and the legs do move about a rotational axis in the waist that way, and then they rotate this way, and they expand out like that. So you can, again, it's really going to help with poses. Um, I really like the details of the kit. Um, there seems to be a lot of good panel lines, a lot of good detailing for a high grade. I really like this kit. Um, just seeing pictures of it just because of all the details that are on the kit to begin with. Um, it's a nice display piece, even if you keep it like this. Um, what else? What else? Um, the leg area also has like an ankle joint. So you got that there from the leg and then you have it attached to the foot. So you can again get some really good dynamic poses with it. Like really good angles, really good like sweep, sweeping out and then pivoting or that way even out more. So you can get a lot of good poses. You should be able to really get get um the feet to be flat so that you can get it in a good stable pose. I have to like kind of adjust myself here since I was posing it up. So I might have to fix that later, but oh there we go. So <sighs> we tackle the arms, we tackle that. The torso has a rotational axis about here, about the top part of the torso, so it has really good front front and back movement. There we go from the other side. There we go. Man. There we go. I can kind of hold that in angle. You guys can see that. And then it rotates about that axis. And then it will eventually rotate about this axis. So you're going to get a lot of good torso movement on this kit. A lot of good poses if you kind of want it to be off center. Um, you can also have it sunken down a little more. You can raise it a bit up. Like I did in order to get like more poses out of it. Um, a little wiggle room perhaps, but you can also have it more set in. Um, but all in all, yeah, it's it's really, really good. Um, so actually, speaking of articulation, my actual biggest con about the articulation isn't even with the actual Gundam model. It's with the support arm for the cannon. So I'm probably going to wind up modding it and adding another another, like joint essentially because it is a pain in the ass to pose the gun the cannon out like the way i want it to pose 
and I feel like literally just adding one joint helps, but you can kind of see that it has trouble resting on the arm. It has trouble like kind of holding the the trigger mechanism or or like you know what would be the the pistol grip mechanism or like pistol grip for the cannon in a like really good in a good way it has to be bent forward a whole lot so i'm adding another joint because i kind of want it where it's actually the forearm is extended out a lot more i don't like it being like kind of like pushed pushed back so i'm gonna try and fix that the best i can um I hope I find a way to do that easily. I mean, I have the bald in arms. I have the other one that has the arm joint structure, so I'm probably going to pull from that. But seeing as this is like one of the main points of the kit is that it has this this sick 180 millimeter cannon that's kind of underslung from the back. Um, I think it definitely needs to be... Uh, I need to do something about it. But it just really stinks that it's not something that that is easily solved with the kit itself. Um, and I definitely would say I think it's a problem. Um, yeah. I mean, it is nice. It does have a poly cap inside the cannon, so you can kind of move it like so. And then um, the the arm joint itself is pretty good too. But it's, it's just a pain for that. Um, another really cool feature is that it does have this spare one which I'm going to wind up using to put another weapon on this side. So instead of it having its 90 millimeter cannon in one, I'm probably going to have it dual wielding essentially two really big cannons, um, which I think is going to look really sick as part of the strike team. Um, all right. Gimmicks of the kit kind of already went over those. Um, this shield is really cool. I like how the, the piles deploy. That's like one of my favorite gimmicks of this kit. Um, the support arm interface with the cannon is really cool. I like the spare one because it allows for customization. Um, it also does allow for two display modes for the kit if you use the stickers, the Hades, and and what I would say is just the normal mode of the kit. Um, the Hades being the red and gold, and then the normal would be that, and some of the white and gray decals down here. Um, but I really just... I don't even care about those. I'm going to be straight up. I do not care about these stickers. I don't like these stickers. I think they are... There's extreme color compensation or a color correction. I don't like that at all. Um, which, is why, which is another thing is that there's really no other third-party decals for this kit. Um, you will have to procure your own decals whether it be you know a generic efsf decal set um caution decals something you find on your own or make your own um but it does not have anything crazy i would highly recommend uh making your own going to get decal paper and probably you know putting a slave a slave wraith logo on because i think that's what a lot of the the pale rider kits are a part of their slave wraith and the normal pale rider you know, like group or whatever. Cause I know the cavalry is part of that group and that decal is sick. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want a grim reaper? Um, so that's really all I have for the, the major points of the kit. Um, in terms of what I want to do with the kit, I want to paint it up in an olive drab color scheme. Um, pretty much where you see all the light blue, I'm going to hit it with a light drab, I think, or, you know, just do more color separation after that. Um, I want to keep the dark blue the dark blue because um, I really like it for one, but two, I think it will actually look really good with, with uh, uh, the olive drab. I think I'm going to keep this. I'll probably do some type of color, like olive drab color separation here and some metallics like on this, but I like the gray. I like this dark gray that it already has. I'm probably not going to hit that too much. Um, and then I'll probably throw in hints of red to kind of match with the Hades visor. Also, olive drab is in here, and um, either gold, um, where the Hades parts would get painted on, or where the Hades stickers would go that are gold. I probably hit it with a little bit of gold or bronze in there to kind of match with the olive drab a bit better. But um, those are my major customization plans. Besides, like I said before, adding another heavy weapon. Um, and then I'm probably also going to either take this and heavily customize it, or um, just 
do without it altogether. I really there's part of me that likes this design and there's part of me that hates it and I don't know why because I like bull pups but I don't like the simplistic design of this bull pup. But this one looks better than the GM Sniper 2s. I think that one's the one that I like cuz it doesn't have that many decal or details in it. This one's pretty detailed. Um so I might have it keep it. But we'll we'll see. If that's the case, I'll probably have it racked on the backpack or something. I'll do some customization there. Um but yeah, um, that, shit, that is pretty much the kit, um, I don't really have much more to say on it, um, it is a nice little kit, um, it fits really well with the strike team, I'm really, really excited to get that incorporated with that team, um, I already have some decals set aside for that, I have some decals on the way to kind of, um, make teams mesh with one another. But yeah, um, thank you guys for joining me on this review. I know this has been a bit of a long one, but I think it's really given a good overview of the kit and giving you guys the deca or details that you need in order to figure out whether or not you want to actually spend the money on a P-Bondi kit. Um, so yeah, until next time, pilots, sortie out and hobby on.